I've learned from a failure. Dedication, discipline, and drive. Seizing every moment that comes up in this life. Gold medalists at the Olympics will no longer have to make do with just glory and a gong. This, as World Athletics has announced, a 50,000 US dollar prize for the winners across all 48 events on the track and field program at the Olympics. What does this bonanza mean for athletes and their coaches? And among sports administrators, is there a growing feeling that this windfall would incentivize those who would cheat their way to Olympic glory and cash? I revealed the topic. You are here. I'm ready. Let's do lead story. Right, so we are here for a lead story. We're taking on a sporting theme this evening, and we're talking about that announcement a few days ago that World Athletics has sweetened the pot significantly where the Olympics is concerned. Remember, in the entire 128-year history of the Mother Olympics up to this point, the Olympics started, the Mother Olympics did in 1896. It's been an amateur pursuit. No money for the winners from the organizers or the athletes' body globally. That has changed now because track and field has become the first sport to put up prize money for the winners of their respective events at the Olympics and 40,000 pounds sterling equivalent of 50,000 US dollars that's the bounty that the gold medalists will reap the reward for silver and bronze medals that will come from the 2028 games to be held in Los Angeles so 50,000 US dollars if it's a relay squad that wins the gold medal it will be split among each participant in that relay team and as they go along, you know that this is going to be something that is talked about right throughout the Olympics. 48 track and field events on the program at the Olympics. So it will be 48 winners, 48 gold medalists who will go home with this prize. And I found it necessary to talk to some of the local players, athletes, coaches, former athletes and administrators about what this means right around the compass. I have with me here on set Jermaine Hamilton. He is a former sprinter. He's now coaching at GC Foster College, trying to find the next Olympic champion. I have on Zoom a uh, respected coach, highly respected coach, uh, Maurice Wilson, a principal of the GC Foster College of Physical Education and Sport. And on Zoom, we have the man leading the Jamaica Olympic Association, Christopher Samuda. I just saw a shot of Maurice looking as if he is waiting to go to court. Maurice, you're not going to court today. You're talking sport. The thing you know at the back of your hand. Welcome. Uh, I think it's necessary, though, for me to start with the man in studio next to me. Uh, Jermaine, as a former athlete, I, I know you'd, you'd, you'd wish that you, were, you had the youth on your side and you had everything in order and you'd be going to the Olympics to get a crack at 50,000 US dollars. That said, that said, you're preparing people for this mission. 50,000 US for the winners. What does that mean for you, for your athletes? Well, to be honest, it is good. It is really good because um, the Olympic is the highest level. Whenever you speak of track and field, the Olympic is the highest level. So who wouldn't want to be compensated? They get compensated at the World Championships. So the Olympics, it's a great feeling to know that athletes will be compensated for their hard work that they have put in. Does money motivate athletes, uh, uh, Jermaine? Is that a real consideration or people are just running for other things? In real terms, if there's a big prize at the end, does that make an athlete train hard and be more disciplined in real terms based on your experience? To be honest, yes, in some sense, because the sport of track and field, you have to really, really love mm. track and field because when you look at the other sports comparing to track and field, what they get, com what the, the compensation that they get versus what track athletes get, it's way bigger. When you look at a football player, mm -hmm. an NFL player, the amount of money that they get versus what track athletes get, it's 
they have to run for it mm -hmm. because it will be the next thing that will put the food on the table for yes. them. So they have to, you know. I'm happy how you answered because many people would say, well, that's an obvious answer, George. Money would motivate. But no, the track and field athlete is devoted. And for so many years, they've been competing without this prize or without big prizes in many events. And they keep on going because of their love for the sport. But you're saying that this will no doubt sweeten labor and sweeten and push their endeavors further. Encouragement, sweeten labor. Encouragement, sweeten labor. <laughs> Maurice, I turn to you. Um, usually... You hear rumors of big decisions that are about to be made by big sporting associations, big sporting association bosses. I didn't hear a rumor about this until I picked up my phone and read the story. I nearly fell off my chair. I was so happy. I was shocked. I was everything all in one year reaction to, to this announcement. Well, um, it's long in coming. I am very happy that we have an excellent lawyer on the other side, who is, um, of course, Mr. Christopher Samuda, so I don't have to worry based on my comments, but <laughs> this, has, <laughs> this is long in coming. We need to remember that athletes are professionals and this is their career. Every single time that they run, they put their career on the line. There's a 70% chance of an athlete getting injured when they compete. And so it's important, just when we, when, when we pursue our professional path, we are compensated, that they are compensated when they perform. If it is recreational uh, activity, we can understand. If you're volunteering to support a brand or an organization, that's different. But every time they go on the track to perform, especially to entertain, it is work that is being done. So they must be compensated at all times. So I think this should have happened a long time, but it's a welcome uh, news. Christopher, the Olympics for, long, for a long time has marketed itself as a pure pursuit, you know? Uh, men and women coming together, powered by, or inspired by the Corinthian spirit to pursue glory for themselves and their country, not considering money as any motivation. That changes now. Not necessarily so. Um, I welcome the news that our athletes are going to be remunerated. As many persons have um, postulated, they have worked exceptionally hard and made a lot of sacrifices, family and others, in order to bring glory to their respective countries. So I welcome the news. But that in and of itself, I don't think will discount the aspirations and the inspirations of the Olympic movement, and in particular the Olympic Games. There are athletes who are not, of course, motivated by money, and who are just set as the life, and who win, and who compete simply because they want to ensure that they optimize their performance and they do best for their country. Yes, they may be exceptions that may be encapsulated in our parlance and just money and expense. But we have to ensure that that philosophy and that ideology does not become a preoccupation to the extent that athletes are now just consumed with gain and materialism. But the jury welcomes the news. Um, the Olympic movement has always invested in the respective sports. A lot of the revenue that comes from the Olympic Games finds its way back into international federations as well as national Olympic committees. Just so to that extent, the International Olympic Committee has been making financial contributions to the respective federations as well as the national Olympic committees. Yeah. Hold it right there for us, Christopher. Stay where you are, Morris. Coming back to you, Jermaine. We're talking the Olympics. We're talking about the big news. World Athletics pumping big bucks into the Olympics insofar as gold medalists are concerned in track and field. And we'll take the discussion further along after the break. This is Lead Story. Hi, I'm Wayne. And I'm Tammy. And, and we, we are, are the Mitchells. You can watch Meet the Mitchells right here on CBN TV every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Yes, you guys don't want to miss it. We will be having new episodes every week. So definitely follow along with our family. Meet the Mitchell family. Good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> You're the sugar to my tea. Meet the Mitchell family. I'm Celine Gordon, host of Holy Road. Hey everybody, what's up? It's your boy John Mark Wigan, host on the show. 
Holy Road. Listen, people need to know what's happening in the church and in ministry in all of Jamaica. It's an absolute blessing. We're really excited to share this. Tune in to see me see it happen. Welcome back to Lead Story Talking Olympics. I have in studio with me a former athlete and coach now at GGC Foster College of Physical Education and Sport, Jermaine Hamilton. On Zoom, I have Maurice Wilson, one of the most respected, respected coaches in the Caribbean and a sports administrator as well. And I have one of the most powerful sports administrators in Jamaica and the region, Christopher Samuda. Uh, Christopher, the issue I want to put to you is this. There's so much cash in world athletics. I'm not talking about the association or just athletics globally. The Olympics in 2022, 7.6 billion US dollars in revenue. The world champions do well cycle after cycle. Why stop at only 50,000? Why did the needle not go beyond that point for the, the decision makers who decided on a cash prize for Paris 2024? I think world athletics would be in a better position to answer that question. <laughs> Uh, simply because I'm not the custodian of their wallet at all. But what I have said before, I think, is a response to what you have just asked, is that quite a few dollars, if not many, find their way back into the domestic Olympic movement via the National Olympic Committee and also the International Federation. So I suspect policy issues are going to govern the disbursement of funds by World Athletics. Um, I can't tell you precisely what informed their decision. But I welcome the decision, and I'm hoping that we will see an incremental, if not a meteoric rise in the fees, and that there will be established criteria so people understand quite clearly the basis on which they're going to be rewarded financially. Reason for asking the question of you, Christopher, because the thing is this. Many people looking at these headline numbers, how much revenue is generated by the Olympics or the World Championships, and they look at the 50,000 and think that that's the only spend that the, 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 the governing bodies make back into the sport. And you're saying yes. not so. Yes. But from an Olympic perspective, you must remember that there are several Olympic sports. Okay, so the cash has to be distributed in a very equitable and equality way. So, second field is one sport, but you also have the winter sport. So, whatever is generated from the island has to be distributed um, among several sports. Now, World Athletics must have their criteria for saying that look, this is what we're going to do at this time. Yes. I'm not pretty at all to their revenue, I'm not pretty at all to their cost structure. What I would say is that Lord Co has indicated that that there is going to be an increase in the future, and I look forward to that. Yes. Uh, Maurice, people are saying, well, here we go again. We are opening up a portal now with the, by virtue of this, 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 this huge cash reward for the cheaters to run amok because this will motivate athletes, motivate those who condition athletes to try to cut corners in pursuit of glory and cash. Is that a real fear, or is it mm, trumped up? Before I respond to your question, let us put a couple of things in perspective. Most countries that host uh, the Olympic Games, they do not necessarily get a, a profit on their return, apart from maybe infrastructure profit and so on. So, for example, Tokyo, I think it costs maybe about 30 to 35 billion to host the Games. The TV rights in 2016, I think, was about 2. 2. something billion dollars. Now, when you put all of that in perspective, we're athletes will be spending $50,000. Less than 5% will be able to earn. Those who are going to earn directly from, those, from the prize money are those who make the final. Eight athletes will make the final. So if you were to think about 2,000 athletes competing, and for each dis discipline, you have eight persons in the final, and you pay prize money. I'm not even sure if the prize money is from one to eight. I think it's from one to three. And so the numbers, when you put it together, sounds a lot, 50,000 and so on. But in perspective, right, in spreading the money across the, 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 the athletes, it is not what it really appears to be. Yes. Now, in terms of motivation and um, cheating, yes. um, I think Christopher alluded to it. Uh, most of the athletes, let us be frank, will not make the top eight. So there are athletes from certain countries 
that will run the first round and don't make the second round. Why do they do it? They do it for country. They do it for their, 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 their love of the sport. So that doesn't change. The, the incentive is similar to what they would have earned at the World Championships, and things have basically remained the same. So the, the, sometimes I think we overindulge in terms of speaking about finance. How much money are they going to make? The, the reality of it, it is the lowest paid sport yes. at the professional level. But, but here's the crux of the, the thing, though. Here's the crux of the thing, though, Morris. The United yes. States, even before now, have rewarded their gold medalists at the Olympics to the tune of forty thousand U.S. dollars. Some people say that, aha, there is why you have motivation for so many of their athletes over time to have found themselves in situations where they have not been able to get the right result on a doping test. Because there's a huge incentive to be an Olympic champion if you're an American, given what USA Track and Field does for you. So now that, the, that World Athletics is putting a huge cash prize up for grabs, on top of what you will get from your local federation, the incentive for athletes to want to cheat for their coaches to want to send an athlete there who is in prime condition to land that gold medal, that is high by virtue of this cash injection. I'm asking you from your perspective if that's a real fear or you think that's made up, that that's imaginary, that's imagined, that, 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 that those circumstances. No, man, that's a fallacy, man. That's just perception. Uh, persons just come up with all of these connotations without no data, no empirical evidence. It, it is not... This, uh, if athletes want to cheat, they're going to cheat anyway. We have seen athletes who would have been champions, would have, would have been making millions, and they still cheat. Mm -hmm. And we have seen athletes who have not been making any money and have continued over the years. They made the finals. They never get a medal. We don't give them, especially in Jamaica, we don't give them the respect in making the top eight. All of us, including the media too, and coaches and, and sport administrators, because they are not medalists. And they have continued along the journey, and they have stayed clean. So... I don't believe that it will make a difference. What it will do, it will help those athletes, and I want you to listen to this carefully, those athletes who complete a season after preparing sometimes for four years for the Olympics, if they make it to the final and they earn, they will be able to get a head start in preparing for the next season. Because most of them go and participate with their heart, similar to what other athletes in, in, the, in a couple of years used to do, and at the end of the day, they cannot um, provide for themselves a good meal. They do not have accommodation after. And it is not mismanagement of funds. Yes. It is just a fund. Yes. J Jermaine, it's, a, it's, it's an issue. Uh, I'm happy that the, the, the man with the experience at the level of, of Maurice Wilson is speaking the way he does because as the coach preparing athletes with so much money now on the line, does that change the dynamic between you and your athlete? Does the athlete demand that you do more to put them in shape to make an Olympic team with an Olympic gold medal? Do you demand more of the athlete given the potential reward that's done at the end of the rainbow for you, the person preparing them for battle? Well, a very interesting question. Uh, I think it remains the same. The focus remains the same. Yes. We're aiming at first to make the cut for the Olympic, and then we take it step by step to the rounds, round by round, to make it to the final. Because at the end of the day, we are talking about the incentive, and as Mr. Wilson said, only one person, based on what I read, yes. only one person will get that $50,000. Yeah, yes. So one person will get the 50000 So at the end of the day, we just have to work hard and try to mark it ourselves as athletes. Athletes have to just work out to try and market themselves to attract other sponsors than that one little prize money that they are shooting after the Olympic Games. As a coach, do you look at the reward down the line or you just focus on preparing the athletes? Preparing the athletes. And the reward must be in the back of your head, but preparing the athletes entails all of that. There you go. All right, yeah. we'll take our final break, come back with more on a lead story after this fascinating uh, conversation with these gentlemen of the sport. Travel the seas of travel the waters. 
Once I was weak, now I'm much younger. I've worked in the sun, look what I've become. I've conquered the beast, now I'm much greater. I've learned from a failure. Dedication, discipline, and drive. Seizing every moment that comes up in this life. Jamaica's favorite drama, Your Guilty Pleasure. All that having a baby now is going to do for you is make you a prisoner of this apartment. Royal Palm Estate is on CVM every Tuesday and Sunday at 9 p.m. Brought to you by MIB Insure. Switch to MIBinsure.com today and save serious money. No more fear of missing out. CVM TV News is on YouTube. Get up to date news, sports, and business content at CVM TV News anytime, anywhere. Subscribe now to CVM TV News to see it happen. Lead story is talking about the Olympics and the big cash prize on offer for the gold medal winners across the 48 events on the track and field program at the Paris Games. Track and field only for now, so track and field has a first mover advantage over the rest of a very, very crowded Olympics field. The JOA president, Christopher Samuda, remains with me. Christopher, the JOA has... Uh, done something that many many other countries in the other organizations in the region rather have yet to respond to prior to the 2022 olympics the tokyo games uh, the joa announced a cash incentive program for the jamaican athletes where they would pay six million for a gold medal four million for a silver and two million dollars for a bronze a 41 million dollar pot in which the joa put five million in directly and your corporate sponsors helped you with the rest that was on offer for for the athletes heading into those games in Tokyo, where there is something similar heading into Paris for the Jamaicans. We are in fact considering that, all right, and we are also considering another element, which I am not going to de declare no. But um, I'm glad that you had raised that because we felt at that time, particularly with COVID imminent, and of course um, upon us, that we should do something. And we not only gave that cash incentive and leveraged our, our, our reputation in the corporate world in order to get other sponsors on board, but what we also did is put, we put out the Olympic Destiny Series in which Shelley, if my memory serves me correctly, went first time below 10.7 because we recognized that we must and we have a responsibility to ensure that our athletes are prepared for the Olympic Games. So we will always incentivize our athletes and we not only do that directly by cash injection, there we have, in fact, Olympic Solidarity Scholarship. And, in fact, we have inaugurated our own scholarship, which are not simply academic in its in their character. We devote part of those scholarships to day-to-day -day expenses because we recognize that as we incur day-to-day expenses in preparing themselves optimally for competition, and therefore we have a responsibility to shoulder some of those expenses. So my institution has done quite a lot in terms of in, in, um, intensifying artists, not only intensifying artists, but other artists as well, who have been the recipients of scholarships and recipients of cash injection. But what I want to say is that I do not think it is an inevitable in terms of conclusion that a cash injection would necessarily have the effect of persons thinking. What we need to do, however, and that is something that is an ongoing objective of the Jamaica Olympic Association, is to be assertive in our educational campaign of our sportsmen and sportswomen. Yes. Which will, of course, obviate them from having those sorts of thoughts and will also instill in them the value of Olympism, which will, of course, be um, a result to their benefit, not only in their competitive life, but also in yes. their career life. Yes, yes. Maurice, we're almost out of time, but I must ask you, uh, we all agreed that this is an, an awesome move, a necessary move at this time. Uh, one hopes that the sport, though, can unearth the kind of stars, superstars, alpha stars that Jamaica has given to the Olympics in recent time to unlock more revenue earning opportunities, Maurice, so the prize pot on offer for athletes can be even bigger than it is now. Yes, I do agree. Uh, the, the movement a couple of years ago by the Jamaica uh, Olympic Association was an excellent move. I'm expecting with all the numbers I'm hearing in the media that 
it will be even better this year because there are options in terms of um, companies that can be pursued. I think we need to leverage, and when I, when I use the term we, athletes, sports administrators, and managers, leverage the branding in order to, to elicit more earning from corporate Jamaica and, interna and, and internationally, and also leverage the brand. Uh, the, the, the training and the preparation of athletes require sometimes millions of dollars. And what I am confident about, George, is that nothing will be taken away from the, the spirit that athletes have for the Olympics. I know athletes would have done extremely well at the World Championships, made, done well financially, but the Olympic yeah. medal, yes. without any incentive yes. at that point, is what is important to them. So Absolutely. I don't think that will change. And I think the move by um, World Athletics and we're expecting that the JOA will continue under Mr. Samuda to yes. give the sort of support yes. that they, they gave the last time around will make things better for the athletes. Absolutely. Jeremy, the last word goes to you. Maurice touched on it. The Olympics are the Olympics. The Olympic final is the Olympic final. A medal is a medal. Cash or no cash, you'd still be motivated to do as much as you are doing for your athletes, eh? Yes, very much. Very much so. The Olympic is, as I said before, the pinnacle. Yeah. The pinnacle. So even if you win a world championship medal, it lasts for two years. Yes. But when you win an Olympic medal, it lasts for a lifetime. Uh, like, and you're an Olympian it lasts for forever. A lifetime. Christopher Samuda, thank you very much. Maurice Wilson, thank you very much. Jermaine Hamilton, thank you very much. My take is it's an excellent move. The JOA uh, showed its hand years ago when it introduced the incentive system for the medalists for Jamaica. They will go one better. You heard the pledge from the JOA boss. World Athletics, brilliant move. There's a lot of politicking between the head of World Athletics and the head of IOC ahead of a vacancy at the IOC next year. So the way the move was announced, politics was involved. When those big boys play politics, as they say, the African proverb, the grass gets trampled. Very happy that this has happened. And yeah, the Olympics, no longer a purely amateur pursuit. But I like when athletes and their handlers get due reward for their toil and their effort. Uh, two ladies who are Olympians of the news, TK and Curlin, are standing by. 50,000 US dollars for running, jumping, throwing and everything. Uh, Curlin, uh, were you a sprinter at any time in your career, oh, in your yes, life? yes, man. And I am now. I'm going to the Olympics. You're coming? I mean, if George <laughs> is telling me I can, I will. You will do well in the high jump, TK. See, there, I receive that. There you go. All right. All right. Thank you for watching Lead Story. The news comes up next. We'll be back in this space next week.